and welcome once again to It's a Mystery. In today's show, we're going to investigate some of the most incredible mysteries you're ever likely to hear. Once again, Tristan and I have been out searching for some more amazing stories. And together in the studio, we'll be attempting to solve another great collection of unbelievable mysteries just for you guys. After years of speculation, the secrets behind this pyramid can finally be revealed. We reveal how freaky fashion can be. And what fantastic creature did this man discover whilst on the beach? Here's a mysterious one for you. Now we've all heard tales of the legends of the pyramids of Egypt and the curse of the mummy's tomb. But are they creeping closer than we think? Because it's a mystery why this pyramid was built. The pyramids of Egypt are known throughout the world. The largest and most famous is the Great Pyramid at Giza and is the only one of the original seven wonders of the world left. Many people believe that the pyramids of Egypt were a feat of architecture too complex for the ancient Egyptians. This has led some people to believe that they were built by visiting aliens. The pyramids have also been the subject of many famous films and there have been spooky stories that the pyramids are home to the curse of the mummies. Some people believe that these curses have been the cause of many people's mysterious fate. But the real mystery is why this pyramid was built in an East Sussex churchyard. Yep, I've discovered a real pyramid nestling in the heart of the English countryside in the beautiful village of Brightling. But that isn't the only weird thing I've found around here. In the middle of a field just around the corner is what looks like Cleopatra's Needle, another famous ancient Egyptian monument. And in this field is something that looks like a big upside down concrete ice cream cone growing from the ground. Very strange. Hmm, so what on earth's going on? A pyramid, a needle, a cone. And how are they all connected? Is the curse of the mummy's tomb about to descend? Or are they all some form of early alien beacon? What do you think? Well, whatever the explanation, these structures do have a strange story to tell. Now I've made some inquiries and all these weird and wonderful structures, the pyramid, the needle and the cone, have something in common with one person. His name was John Fuller, a wealthy country squire who lived in Brightling in the 19th century. His plan was to be remembered by future generations for building these amazing structures. This cone is known as the sugar loaf because it looks like sugar, which many years ago was sold in a solid cone-shaped mass like this. And you can see the similarity. But why build a big concrete cone? Well, the story goes that John Fuller had a bet with someone that from his house in the distance, you could see a church spire. And on realizing that you actually couldn't, he had this built. So, from his house in the distance, you could see what looks like a church spire. He tricked the person and won the bet. The Egyptian looking needle over there stands at 20 metres tall. It's one of the highest points in all of Sussex. The reasons for its erection are not known. Maybe John Fuller wanted to keep us guessing. And as for the pyramid, well, John had the 8 metre high structure built as a tomb for himself 24 years before his death. And there are actually tales that he's sitting inside at a table wearing a top hat with a meal in front of him. And that solves the mystery why this pyramid was built in an East Sussex churchyard. It's a mystery how you can talk to the animals. How about like this? Very good. That'll have the animals oh. talking. No, that's good. Right, or even, listen up to this. Go on. At least I yeah. get myself. That's pretty good as well, you know. Any idea what they're on about? Well, animals communicate to each other with signals and sounds, and they all do it in incredibly different ways. Did you know what I was trying to do? Yeah. Yeah, no. I was Obvious. trying to talk like a dolphin. Yeah. Oh, really? That yes, was, you that knew great. that. I almost felt like I was in the ocean. <laughs> they talk to each other with whistles and make strange clicking sounds. 
They can emit up to 700 clicks a second. For example, if a dolphin is in danger, it'll whistle to other dolphins for help in its own coded language. And I was talking like a cricket. Mm. Exactly the same. Male crickets talk to others by scraping their wings together. Now one wing has a jagged edge and the other wing rubs against it. But the mystery is, can we, like the famous Dr. Doolittle, really talk to the animals? Well, us humans think we do understand how some animals communicate with each other. We can even copy them, but we can't actually speak their languages properly. It's a bit like this. If I talk like this, it sounds exactly like I'm talking French, a language that is not my own. But it isn't real French. I'm making French sounds, but not making any real French words. So like Tristan and his French, we can only mimic the sounds that animals make, so we can sound a bit like them. Their actual languages are far too complicated for us to understand properly. So let's examine one language in detail, birds. In fact, let's look at the case of one bird in particular, the chaffinch. Now, just listen to this. Here we go. Got it? Okay, Tristan, try and copy that. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. bad. It did sound a bit like a chaffinch. But listen carefully to what happens if we slow it down quite a bit. Neil, that doesn't really sound any slower no, at all, does at it? All. No. Huh. Surprising, isn't it? But it's true. That was slowed down. It's just that it sounds like that there are as many notes as before. Now, this is because each of the notes we heard the first time are, in fact, made up of lots of other little notes that our ears aren't sensitive enough to pick up when we listen to them normally. A chaffinch can fit 20 notes into every second, which means that by the time it takes you to clear your throat, ahem, a chaffinch could sing as many notes as there are in Ring a Ring of Roses. Could you imagine doing all of that in a second? It'd be a lot harder to imitate than you think. All right, so we don't really stand a chance of sounding like a chaffinch, let alone of holding a conversation with one. Incredible. And that's just one type of bird talk. There are literally thousands of different ways that animals communicate. So it just goes to prove how difficult it would be for us to really learn all their languages and talk to the animals. For centuries, people have been convinced that the oceans hold some of the world's deepest secrets. But it's a mystery what came out of the sea in July 1987. Picture this. It was a beautiful sunny day and a young man was wandering along the beach near his home on the west coast. As he idly threw pebbles into the sea, one of the stones hit the water and the man winced as a glint of silver was reflected back at his face. He blinked and the bright flash seemed to disappear back under the water's surface. Thinking nothing of what he'd just seen, he picked up a dry piece of driftwood and idly started doodling and writing his name in the sand near the water's edge. Suddenly, a splash of salt water hit him in the eye and he was aware of some sort of commotion. Curious, he went over to the rocks to investigate. There was another splash, flicking water high into the air. He looked down and saw something rippling beneath the surface. The man carefully climbed across the rocks to find out what was causing the commotion and immediately he gasped with shock at what he saw. He peered further over the rocks and there in the water below him was something so unbelievable, so fantastic and so, so beautiful. So what did the young man say? Well, let's look at the facts. First of all, there was the bright reflection from the water. Then there was the splashing by the rocks. And last but not least, the coloured ripple. Perhaps it was some sort of tropical fish or something brightly painted that had drifted ashore. What do you think? Well, what the man actually saw was something much more amazing. The man stared in disbelief. The creature was partially covered in seaweed, so at first it was difficult for him to work out what he was seeing. But then all of a sudden it turned round its head to reveal the beautiful face of a young girl with long flowing hair. The man's eyes nearly popped out of his head because at the end of her body was the tail of a fish. She stared at the man. The man stared back and at that moment he realised that he was looking into the eyes 
of a mermaid. So, do you believe in mermaids? Well, I'm not sure myself. Yeah, well, neither was I, but when you delve into the history books, you discover that over the centuries there have been plenty of other sightings of mermaids. Hmm, so how about it? Half human, half fish? Could it really be possible? Well, in the animal kingdom, there have actually been creatures bred that are half one thing and half another. For example, we've contacted Anne Silf at London Zoo and asked her whether it's possible to mix two different types of animal together. This is what she told us. Closely related species such as lions and tigers have been bred creating ligers and tigons mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. So there you go, you can get some things that are half one thing and half another. So, it might just be possible that something like a mermaid could in fact have been seen. Now what did the man do when he saw the mermaid? I don't know, what did the man do when he saw the mermaid? No, no, I mean, what did he do in the story? What? It's not a joke. Oh, right. <laughs> don't! Well, he stood on the shore, let her go, and watched her swim off to the deep. And to this day, he swears that the story is true. Mm. So, did he actually talk to her? <gasps> no. Did he take pictures of her? <gasps> no. Do we actually believe him? <gasps> Hmm. Here's a weird case for you. Joyce West from Hereford went out on what she thought was a normal trip in her car to the shops. However, she was unaware of the strange events that were about to unfold. It was the 11th of May last year and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I drove my car to the shops and parked over there. However, it was when I went to lock the car that strange things began to happen. I have one of these special keys that works by pressing the button in the key ring. It usually locks the car doors instantly. On this particular day, I could not get the doors to lock. I kept pressing the button, but there was no response. I took a bit of a gamble and left the car unlocked. So what's the problem? A normal person goes about her normal business as she does day after day. She parks her car and is unable to lock it. Not that weird, I hear you say. Well, things began to take an even more bizarre twist when she returned. I was a bit worried while I was shopping, in case anyone had broken into the car. I was relieved when I returned and found that all appeared to be okay. I got into the car and put the key into the ignition. I turned it to start the car. Nothing happened. I tried again. Still nothing. I tried to think of a reason why the car wouldn't start. It seemed possible that the engine had failed or the ignition key had a flat battery. In desperation, I rang the breakdown service who ended up towing me out of the car park. When I got home, I tried the ignition again and to my surprise, it started immediately. When I spoke to the people at the garage, they said, you must be parked in Union Walk car park. You're the fourth person this has happened to. Huh. Fascinating story. So what could be the cause of the weird goings on in the car park? Could it be the work of someone playing a joke? Or maybe there was some sort of electrical fault? What do you think? Well, we spoke to a local car expert, Simon Perring, who made some investigations into the mystery. He told us, in the Union Walk car park, there were lots of different radio waves coming from the coaches and hospital nearby. If these are combined with certain weather conditions, it causes the signals from people's key rings to become scrambled and confused. This makes it impossible for their cars to start. So the secret of the mysterious breakdowns may be nothing more than Interference, all coming from the coaches and nearby hospital. You see, if there are too many signals around in the same place, it's likely that the messages all get jumbled up and don't work properly. I'm pleased the mystery was solved. I thought I was going to have to buy a new car.
It's a mystery to me what people will do to look good. Hmm, don't know about a mystery, it's more of a stupidity if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> Check oh. out these babies. Platform shoes, which when you when you really have a good look at them, they're a bit ridiculous, aren't they? <laughs> I think you look hot, Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> if you think those are bad. What about plastic surgery to make you look better? Now that must be really painful. Oh yes, well what about wigs that are two metres tall and so dirty that they've got bugs and fleas running about inside them? What? <laughs> Oh, don't worry, I'm not going mad. I'm talking about some of the lengths that people go to to make themselves look good. If you think people dress strangely now, you will not believe what they used to do hundreds of years ago. Ah, I see. You see, ladies and gentlemen wore wigs in the late 1700s. Women's were built up out of horse hair put over wire frames. In extreme cases, they could reach up to the height of two metres, which made you look a bit like Marge Simpson. <laughs> they would be greased and then flour would be sprinkled and patted all over the wig to make the hair white. Thanks, Tris. And because of the flower, all sorts of bugs would have been attracted to the wig. So every now and then, the wig was opened up. Oh, that's disgusting. I'm starting to itch. I'm going to take this off. <laughs> I'm off. I'm off. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> now, in Tudor times, huge starched collars were popular. Over the years, they got bigger and bigger. So it must have been difficult to see your feet and nearly impossible to eat. Here, now, go on, give this a shot. Okay. Try this, try That's eating that. Uh, <laughs> it's not easy, you know. Oh, this is stupid, I'm gonna take this thing off. <laughs> All right, okay. What do you think this is? Um, oh, I don't know, is it some sort of old-fashioned rabbit cage? <laughs> You're a fool. <laughs> no, it's not a rabbit cage, it's a crinoline. Which is... Da -da 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 -da. A special frame that ladies wore under their dresses to keep the material away from their bodies. Ooh. What do you think? Oh. Though they made the skirts and their dresses look full and nicely curved, they were extremely uncomfortable mm -hmm. to wear. <laughs> and how did they sit down? Well, if you watch this, go on. <laughs> excuse me while I go and find my seat. <laughs> <laughs> Rather difficult. Ooh, As you can up. see, yeah. I was very ladylike on my ego. However, they have been known to save someone's life. Oh, hold no. on a sec. I don't see how fashion can save someone's life. Well, apparently a crinoline saved a woman when she fell off a bridge in Bristol because what happened was it filled up with air like a parachute, slowed her down and she survived the drop. <laughs> That's ridiculous, isn't That's it? That's true. See, I told you, fashion is so weird. <laughs> Did you say fashion's weird? Yeah, you, completely weird. You think fashion's weird? Yeah, absolutely weird. All right, I'll show you weird. I've been doing a little bit of uh, research, all in the name of It's a Mystery Investigation, of course, and I've dug out an old video of you, Neil, from the 1980s. Check this out. What? What? Look at your hair! Isn't that ridiculous? It looks like his mum. I thought it was a woman! <laughs> Man, you have had some horrors. He looks like Tom wow. Bon Jovi gone wrong, doesn't he? <laughs> ah, I love those t-shirts. <laughs> oh, baby, I was born too late. Oh, man. He's going for the Jane Fonda look. Yeah, all right, I get the message. You're right. It is freaky what people will do to look good. <laughs> that was great. That's a few of life's mysteries solved and some remain unsolved. So join us next time and we'll look into some more. In the meantime, here's one last mystery for you to try and solve. A cowboy arrives in town on Friday. He stays two nights only, stocks up with food and drink and leaves town again on Friday. How is this possible? Can you solve the mystery? We'll let you know the answer next time. See you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>mystery was Johnny loved the colour red, all the furniture in his bungalow was red, the walls were red and so was the carpet, so why weren't the stairs red? The answer is that there are no stairs in a bungalow.